right guys, today we're going to go ahead and be replacing the studs on my Scion TC2. They've gotten de-threaded for some reason by these really pretty aftermarket lugs. It might have been user error, vibration of the tire, who knows. But the point is, is we're going to get it swapped out. I've been riding on four for like a day. It requires five. NASCAR brother says that's not good. I believe it. You don't want to damage these rims. Um, you know, why waste all that money to damage something for something so simple? So what you're going to need is you're going to need your new studs. These are a 12 by 1.50. You can pick them up anywhere at your auto parts store. If you're really anal about it, you can go ahead and go to the OEM um, Scion Toyota place, pick up theirs. You're going to pay a whole lot more though. Um, you're going to need a hammer. You're going to have to knock those suckers out. You're going to need your, um, your jack, standard tools. If you work indoors or with food, I'm a I'm kind of guy who wears gloves. Don't want to get your fingers too greasy, too dirty. That stuff's not easy to take out. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the process. Let's go ahead and get this done. All right, so I got to loosen the, uh, the ones that are already on there. That way I'm not tugging and pulling. Oh, my car is jacked up in the air. profile jacks work really good if your car is low to the ground if not you'd have to drive up on some blocks you have to drive up on some blocks in order to jack it up these low profiles that's what makes it real nice all right so here it is see how bad that's been stripped not really sure why but that's definitely not safe all of these have gotten a little rusted so I'm gonna go ahead and replace those out too so first, what we're gonna have to do is take off this caliper. And so that way we can pull off this disc and then we'll have access to knocking out the, the studs there. All right, so it's time to go ahead and loosen these back bolts. What I found that the uh, 17, mil 17 millimeter works the best. If you wanna make your life easy, get some of this liquid wrench spray the, the nuts before you go and start taking it off makes life easy as well that way you're not struggling what you also want to do maybe get something like a paint can so that way you can rest your uh, caliper on once you've taken it off so let's see here already done the hard work of pushing on it, tugging and pulling. Sorry you guys didn't get to see that. Just didn't know how long of a process that would be. Of course if you have an impact wrench, that definitely makes life easy. Just impact it. Make sure to set your bolts aside. You're not going to get hit, kicked, or lost. Let's see. Spacer for the rims. See how well that paint can works out. If you have one of those, that's usually best, proper height. Comes off the disc. At this point, if you don't like to hear loud metal on metal, it's a good idea to have some earplugs. So you don't hurt your ears. Get your hammer. You're ready to hit your stud. You don't really have to worry about putting a lug nut on there because you actually have a lot of room after you kick it out. There you go. Easy. Now remember to put your car in neutral, but put your handbrake up so that way you can go ahead and rotate this because you obviously won't be able to put in your new stud with this plate here.
All right, so I did one just to try it out. What we're gonna do, you get a, one of your studs and you have to set it in straight. Now you don't have to hammer it in because when you put on your rim and tire, it's gonna, it's gonna pull it in all the way once that's done, but we wanna set it in place so that way it doesn't wiggle around, fall out after you put everything back together. So what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna set it Grab my stock um, lug nut, put that on. And the reason why we're doing this is because when you hammer it in, it could go in crooked at an angle. That's what we're trying to avoid. We're like a lug nut. Lug nut has your nice angle here. So it's gonna fit right on the hole and pull it in even. All right, so I know it's in neutral. Probably would be easier if I had it out of neutral, but I just want to pretty much tighten them enough to where it gets pulled in enough, set in place. There we go, nice and easy. We're gonna do that to all five. All right, now it's time to put everything back on in reverse. So of course, we're gonna need our rotor and set that in place. Now to make sure this thing holds in place, we're gonna go ahead and get our lug nuts. So that way it doesn't move around when you're trying to put back on the caliper. You don't have to have to tighten them real tight as long as it's just being held in place. I'm just putting on two to be on the safe side, reduce wiggling around. And of course we don't have to put back on our hub spacer, that's for the aftermarket rims and we're gonna be putting on the stock rims until I get some new lug nuts in. Now for some reason, if you manage to step on the brake when you had the, um, after you've had everything off while you were putting it in neutral, your brake pads have compressed and now you're gonna to have to flatten them back out. Luckily for us, I've got a nice caliper brake pad service kit. Now if you didn't have one, you can go to your local auto parts store like AutoZone, you can rent it for free. Uh, you pay a fee, once you bring it back, they give you back that money, it's just a deposit. But uh, luckily I already have one with me. So then we're gonna grab our caliper, put it back over, grab the two uh, bolts that we set aside. We're gonna get those back on. Take the time to go put your vehicle back in park. Take it out of neutral. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the time to pull all these studs out. So that way when we put the rim, it'll be pulled out far enough to actually grab. So I'm just gonna set them all nicely back in there. Now you can do one by one if you'd like. But I find it easier just to go ahead and throw them all on there and just run through them real quick. Just take your time. No need to do it real quick and rushed. When we're trying to pull them through, make sure that you pull through real nice and even. Gonna go in a star pattern. And now that they're all tightened, I'm run through them one more time just to make sure. All right, so they should be pulled all the way through. Go and unbolt them and get your tire. Now, of course, you'd use your regular tire that you took off, but being that I need to order my lugs, I'm going to put back on the stock one. So there we are. So I usually hold the tire with my foot, keep it in place. And I'm just going to go through and put on all the lug nuts.
And of course, when it is time to tighten, you want to go ahead and tighten it in uh, star formation. You don't want to go around like so, because if you do that, you're not going to get your rim properly put on. But I'm sure most of you all, or if not all of you all know that. There we go. Now, of course, if you have an impact wrench, that would have made this job so much easier. But most of us don't, and that's okay. It's got to, like I said, put more elbow grease into it. I do have one. Just wanted to go ahead and show the viewers on how to get it done without it. So after I get that on, I'm going to go ahead and tighten them all just a little bit. Once we get the car back on the ground, we'll be able to actually tighten them with some more force. Now it's time to let it back down. There we go. At this point, we're going to go ahead and tighten them. Again, like I said, star formation. Make sure they're good and tight. Now, pretty much have to go and tighten it to where we can't tighten it much anymore. And the reason being is, remember, we're still pulling that stud into its home spot. That way it gets a good grip. Alright, now I'm going to go back to the one that I started, and sure enough, there's still more slack to be tightened. I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of them. All right, guys, so we got it done. Tires are on. There's the uh, messed up lug. See how it wasn't gonna hold on to anything anymore. And so that's it. If you have any questions, comments, either email me or put your comments in the listings below. Make sure to subscribe, like if you thought it was a good video, and follow if you wanna see more DYIs. I'm sorry I'm out of breath. That tightening those lugs aren't easy, all right? So if you want to go ahead and follow, follow. I have more stuff coming up. I'm going to show you how to do more things to the car. And we have a bunch of other cars that we're going to go ahead and do things to. So make sure to subscribe. Thanks.